everyone. Welcome. Here I should, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> We're going to try picture in picture today. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Let me switch over. Thank you for joining this make along. Today we're gonna to create uh, this card that you see here with the March kit. This can be created with either the classic or the premium kit, so that's awesome. So you, either March kit you have, you can create with me. Oh, I guess I hit my uh, Apple Watch and she spoke to me. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that. Hello, Anne, hello, Kathy, hello, Becky. I'm gonna get a little bit more time here before I get going. The instructions for this uh, make along were shared in the a blog post yesterday. So if you wanna follow along with those instructions there, that's where you can find them. But of course you can just follow along with me cause I'll be going over it step-by-step. Step. Hello, Michelle, long time no see. And um, yeah, this is a fun one. I, I really liked how this card turned out. I was inspired by Japanese silkscreen paintings and the colors that they use, the palette. This is not a palette that I would typically go for, but I love the way it turned out. So I'm really excited to share with you how I created it. And also I think you'll get some tips on how to use the clear set that came with the kit and, and stretch kind of, you're thinking about adding some gr easy gradations here and there. Hello, welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over or change my picture in picture setup here. I've been practicing guys, watch this. Ooh, isn't that cool? And we're going to get started. So this is the card we're creating again. And you can see that beautiful, rich kind of muted palette though, or more neutral, I should say, palette. I love the way it turned out. And it's again, everything that's in for this card was used, or for this card was included in the March kit. So either premium or classic. Yay! Oh, you get your kit Monday? Awesome! So here's the March kit. This is actually my really pristine one, so I'm actually not going to use this these actual stamp sets, but I have my messier one over to the side because I photograph with these. But this gorgeous layering set, or layering kind of stamp set, or HeroScape sort of like set, was part of the kit. And that's what our main focus is today. Kind of all of our stamped images come from this set. So you go ahead and grab that first. Put mine aside. Grab my, my stained one that works just as good, just a little bit not so camera pretty. And I'm gonna use a Misty. A Misty is definitely helpful for day, today. Any kind of stamp positioning tool is helpful. Let me get my other one that's a little bit neater looking than that one. I have multiple Misties because I love them so much. Well, kind of neater. <laughs> I didn't clean my Misty before the live. And you're going to also need an A2 panel of antique ivory cardstock from Hero Art. So a very, very light um, or off-white cardstock. Uh, this, I'm going to hold up white just so you can see. Here's white. Can you see the difference? It's subtle, but it does add a richness to this. Hello, Mary. So I really liked kind of, that's not something I always think about doing too, is starting off with a colored piece of cardstock, especially when I'm going to be doing a lot of ink, a lot of colored inks. But this nice um, antique ivory adds just a little bit more richness, I think, to the palette. So you can go ahead and pop that into your, actually the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna actually follow along my instructions so it doesn't matter totally, is, hi Cindy. Uh, oh, it's rainy in California. I think you're, we, we've we been a little rainy at the beginning of the week. I don't know if we passed it to you or, and we're gonna be cooler uh, this Easter, this Sunday, which I'm so excited about because normally it's so, so hot. So actually we're gonna start by doing a simple ink blend. This is the first few steps in my instructions. So I better follow along with those. So before we get to the stamp set, we're gonna create this gradation in the sky. And I use a couple of inks to do that. It's three inks to be in fact. It's really cooled down here as well. Hopefully we'll be dry on Easter. Yes, I don't know if we will be either. I, I remember my daughter saying, we're gonna have mist in the morning. So that takes some moisture in the air. That's soup. 
super rare for Arizona. I'm excited. Bring it on. I'm I'm headed, I'm happy for I'm ready for not hot. I would even take rainy. I know I'm I've cursed myself, knock on wood, but I even take rainy over a hot Easter. Because that's what it's been most of the time. We're gonna start with this beautiful, really light, light pink. This is soft blossom. And grab one of my hero blending brushes. We have three inks total that we're gonna use that soft blossom pink grapefruit and plum, but we're gonna start with our lightest first. And we're gonna go about halfway, maybe just a tad bit past halfway. I really need a piece of scrap paper. We're gonna use this, this mess up here to kind of tap off, just to be safe. Because I want a soft blend. Mindy is the best ink blender ever. I aspire to be as good as her. <laughs> and I need to be a little bit more patient. And we have snow in the forecast for Sunday in Northern Arizona. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? That's just not the norm. I'm, but I'm, I'm kind of excited. But I'm, I'm in Phoenix, so we're not gonna get snow, but we'll get cooler weather, that's for sure. And I'll take it. So just doing a nice soft blend with this light color. Luckily this color is kind of light to begin with, so it makes it pretty easy. I'm gonna stop there. And we're gonna go on and move on to our next color, which is pink grapefruit. This color is kind of peachy. I love, I, this is one of my new favorites. I love this color. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna switch to a different blending brush. See how dark it's kind of, it's also on the red side. And I just love that change in hue a little bit. Oh, it looks so pretty. Hello, Sherry. Yeah, I love peaches. They've always been one of my favorites too. In fact, I love peach so much I made it one of my um, colors for my wedding. I had those roses that kind of, you know, change, have a gradation from like pink to peach. I, lo I love peach. That was kind of one of my, it's like, I know I want this. <laughs> my next color is plum. This is definitely gonna step it up and make it darker. And my husband might be coming in the door any minute here, so if it gets a little noisy, I am coming from you from my dining room, now pretty much only a craft room. So I'm pretty central in my house. I like it that way, but it does mean that sometimes we get some additional noise. I like to be where all my kids are. It was a necessity when they were little, obviously. Um, but now I just, I'm, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of moving. We have like a closed in half of our carport. We live in an old house that's built in like the forties and doesn't have really a garage, has a carport. And we have a closed in part that was going to be my ceramic studio. You may see in the back here. I have some of my ceramics actually up. I used to do ceramics, teach ceramics too. Um, I went back to, oop, not sloths. I went back to soft blossom. That's not what I wanted to go back to. I want to go back to grapefruit and just kind of blend out that transition. It looks a, maybe a little harsh, maybe too, too much of a jump from to the dark. So I'm going to blend it out a little bit. But now that I don't do ceramics so much, thinking about converting it into a, my card making studio. Oh, we'll see. It's going to be quite an endeavor. <laughs> it's become more storage than anything, which is terrible, but that's how it is a little bit. All right. I'll do a last little bit of blending with soft blush just to bring it down a little bit more, the color. 
and then I think we're done. And it's a beautiful gradation. I love the color. Again, not a combo I would have come up with myself, but I love how it turned out. And if you missed the beginning, I was inspired by some Japanese like silk screens, just kind of the color palettes that I saw in those. And that's where I picked how I picked these colors today because I on my own I wouldn't have come up with this back and forth just bumping it up a little bit more I have a hard time leaving well enough alone and we'll do a final bit of plum <laughs> there we go That camera's probably bouncing because I have to figure out another way to do this one. It's on my table and I'm an aggressive ink blender so everything bounces except for this camera up here won't bounce because it's not connecting my, to my table. So that's good at least. But I apologize that, that this camera over here is bouncing. All right, I think that's it for our sky. I love it. Now we're gonna move on to our stamping of the mountains. So the mountains, let me grab the stamp set. And I think you can see it. So the this is sort of like a layering stamp set, but there's really only these two layers for the mountains and everything else is like a single layer. You have one layer for the water, then you have you know additional elements you can add, uh, a branch, bamboo branch, uh, a gate, a boat, those things you can add to the water. I guess maybe this could sort of, sort of be like considered a second layer because it's a reflection of the sun or moon. But really this, I kind of, there's only these two stamps that actually really are intended to layer. And normally with layering stamp sets, I will start with the more solid stamp. So in this case, which tends to be the bait, which I call the base layer, which in this case is gonna be this one here. But I discovered when I was working with the stamp set, I had a really hard time lining this detail layer, the second layer, to the base layer. So I actually decided to start with the detail layer, which is unusual for me, but it works better. So every once in a while, I'll kind of break my own, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I'll break my own rules. Um, or general good rule of thumb. But for this one, this this stamp said it worked better. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that detail layer for the mountains. Ooh. Very, very sticky. Put that back. All right, grab that guy. Time to get, now it's really time for the Misty. So I'll get my dirty Misty out. And I'll pop it in there. Position those mountains so they're about two thirds up the panel. Somewhere around there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up with my Misty. All right. And we're gonna do some multi inking. So we're gonna use several different inks to create a gradation. I love I love gradations. I love stamping them. I love ink blending them. I think they add so much depth and interest. So a lot of the times when I get these layering kind of stamp sets, the first thing I want to do is start trying out, creating some gradations with them. And I did it again with this stamp set. So I'll hold up the card here so you can see. Can you see how that detail layer is really dark at the top and it starts to get a little bit lighter? That's that gradation I'm talking about. 
When we do these, build these gradations on our stamp, we're gonna start again with our light color. Just like how I like to do a gradation with ink blending, I like to start with the light first. So for this stamp, try to remember, we're gonna start with charcoal. And then we'll move to cup of joe, espresso. So we're gonna use four. And then we'll finish with pitch black at the very tip top of the mountain. I'm gonna put those aside. Grab my charcoal here and I'm gonna ink up about the lower third. And you just make your best guess. Ink it up with that charcoal. Normally I'd put a paper under here so you can kind of see. Let's see if I can grab one. I don't think you're going to be able to see though where I ink because this stamp is pretty dirty, pretty dark. But just that lower third. Grab my scrubber here. I use it kind of like a chucky. I think that's what it's called. I always forget what those are called. Oh, and it got super sticky. Pop it back in the corner and I'm gonna stamp it at least one more time, just to kind of build it up a little bit. Make it a little sharper. So again, about that lower third, maybe a little bit in, a little bit past that, like a half. Hello! Hopefully I put it right back in the corner again. <laughs> That's why I only worry about stamping multiple times. Sometimes I forget to push it all the way back into the corner. Oh, it looks good. That can be a big bummer, admittedly. So I always have to quadruple check myself. But when I start talking and doing these lives, sometimes I forget. All right, we're moving on to our next shade, which is Cup of Joe. Now you can go ahead. It's a little... Because this is going to be like our medium shade. It's not our lightest, but it's our medium shade. We can go ahead and ink up everything above that kind of lower third. Let's see if I can do it a little bit over here. So keep that lower third uninked because we don't want to cover up the charcoal. But everything else can be inked up with that cup of joe. Are we in the corner? I like quadruple check. Oh yeah, that looks great. I'm gonna do it again. And remember, this is our detail layer, so it's okay if it's dark, because our next layer, our base layer, will actually be light. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm now moving on to espresso. I'm gonna ink up kind of the upper third of the mountains with that. And you could use fewer inks. You don't have to use so many. I'm pretty notorious for using too many inks, a lot of inks. I just really like color. I like building that depth. But you could probably get by with just two inks, kind of like a, I would just definitely do like a medium brown and then a really dark brown or a black would probably be fine. Raining in Sacramento, that's right. Getting ready for spring planting, ooh, how exciting. I think my sister started, I feel like I need to go one more time with the, Cup of Joe. I just don't like how it seems a little splotchy. My sister started planting pumpkins and peppers. What else did she plant? Not from seed though. The pumpkins were from seed. I'm not much of a gardener at all. <laughs> I'm not a gardener. Let's just say that. I'm not even a gardener. I wish I was. 
Oh, that looks better, a little bit darker. Okay, then we'll finish um, the top with a little bit of that pitch black, just kind of along that ridge line. There's some trees in there. Never too many. Thank you, Michelle. I love them. I love all the colors, so I, I use a lot. But they're just so fun. They add so much interest. Inks were one of the inks and Copics when I first started card making were the things that I was like, I'm going to spend money on these. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I thought was worth it for sure. And inks even before Copics. Copics took a little bit of a build up. Inks right away I was buying because they're a little bit more. They're, if you get the minis, they're more affordable. One more time with that pitch black, just a little bit. But we're getting a beautiful gradation. Can you see it coming? Clear and warm and south of Tucson. I was just over in Tucson last weekend. It was wonderful. Beautiful there. The desert's so pretty right now. The flowers are like totally in bloom. And green. It's like hard to even recognize it as a desert when it's springtime, it's just so green. There's so many wildflowers, except for the cactus, or the cacti, you wouldn't even know. I think it's a desert. All right, so there's our beautiful gradation. Now it's time for that base layer. So I'm gonna remove the stamp and grab this one right here. Libby. Okay, I'm glad you're here. So grab the base layer and I'm gonna line it up. It goes a bit below. It won't go over the trees. It kind of goes right below the edge of the mountains, just a little bit below. Let's make sure we're nice and in the corner before we get this. And I'm probably going to have to stick my head in here to really lean in and see if I got it lined up. I think that's pretty good. It's pretty forgiving if you do it in this order, I think, which is opposite of what I normally do. Okay, let's pick that up. So let me hold it up real quick so you can see. Maybe that'll help you. See how the trees are kind of past the line of the stamp? Maybe I should have used my cleaner stamp so you could see better. I apologize for that. I didn't think about that until now. All right, this is a pretty solid. Oops, and we're gonna start, but it's gonna be a lot our lighter combo of inks. We're gonna use wet cement. We're gonna grab Cup of Joe. And that's basically all we're gonna use, those two colors. We're gonna go ahead and start with wet cement. And you can ink up, you could ink up the whole thing if you wanted to, it's totally fine. It's such a pretty set, isn't it? I love the scene, I love the, the line quality. It looks like a lino cut, like a print almost. I love that. We're gonna ink up this whole thing with, again, wet cement, which is a lighter, warmer gray than charcoal. I really like this color. I've been really into warm grays lately. Used to be always cool grays. I'm bumping this poor camera so badly. We'll have to figure something else out. Oh yeah, look at it. It's coming along. I'm gonna ink it up and stamp it again. But it looks so good already. Open. Oh, I did say to dry in between, but I think because I was taking a long time talking, it's probably dry enough. 
that's just to kind of set the ink a little bit before you stamp on because you could see we stamped multiple inks and multiple layers of ink and if you work really quickly it wouldn't give that ink enough time to kind of really set into the paper and then you add like another layer of ink which is what we're doing here with this uh base layer uh you could get a little bit more bleeding than you would like but i think i've talked so long that it's probably fine we're not we're not rushing through it at all all the grays are your favorite yes this i know michelle and you work with them so beautifully you are the master of that of grays warm cool any and all <gasps> it's coming along look at that look at that contrast so pretty i love that dark for the detail and light for the base i think i'll stamp it one more time in that wet cement it's just such a solid stamp and then we'll move on to cup of joe to finish it off There we go. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit, kind of the upper third with our cup of joe. Which was our lighter of our two, gr two browns. <laughs> you do say, Cindy says, it looks so cool with the blue on the stamp against the actual image. Yeah, that blue there, it kind of stained. Where's my... And I think that's where we're stopped. Just one little inking up with the cup of joe, and I think that's all it needed. It definitely has that gradation work. It's darker and lighter with both layers, not just the um, detail, but also the base. Very, very pretty. Okay. But I do think now that I'm noticing that things are not as sharp as I would normally like them. And I think that's because I didn't hit it with my heat tool, even though I wrote it in the instructions. So I'm gonna hit it right now. Oh, thanks Libby. <laughs> so I hit it now, even though it's probably silly, but I'm going to heat set it now. So it's gonna be a little noisy. And again, the reason why I lost a little bit of that sharpness is because I did it kind of out of the intended order, where I started with the detail layer first, then went to the base. And also, I didn't follow my little kind of hack, which was to um, dry it in between. I went to try it before I stamped the base, but it still looks good. I just feel like it's not as sharp. Some of the lines are not as sharp as they could be. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit softer and that's why, but totally fine. Not really a problem at all, just me being nitpicky. All right, let's move on to the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this stamp out. Oh gosh, Libby. This month's, our April's kit, it's really good. I'm gonna actually share, I can't, cause this live is so early, um, this make along is, uh, Normally we do make alongs on Sunday because of Easter we had this we have it early. Surely she's using I'm using the March kit, Shirley. Yeah. This is the March kit. The upcoming kit, April's kit, which comes out this Monday. So it's still coming out this Monday, but typically we do our make alongs on Sunday, but we're not doing this one on Sunday. We're doing it today because of Easter. But I will be sharing you with you some. Um, my cards at the end of this live with the April kit and we have we are sharing right now our uh, make along or no I'm sorry 
our countdown right now. So today was the first day of the countdown. Tomorrow will be our second day. We're only going to do a two day countdown because again, Easter. But uh, so there's definitely some sneak peeks of some gorgeous projects created by the creative team up on the blog right now. You can also go to their uh, their blogs and see their projects as well. But yeah, and I will share some of my cards are created with the April kit, but it's a gorgeous kit. Gorgeous. I'm so excited. They really knocked out of the park with this March one. I love this March one that we're using right now, but I really love April as well. And totally different theme, completely different thing. That's what's always surprising to me is how they can really create such beautiful, the, the design team can create such beautiful, comprehensive kits that where the, th and the themes are so different, can be so different from month to month. So much talent. Okay, I should probably show you what stamp I'm getting. So here is the water layer. So that's the one you want to pull off. Go and grab your panel and pop it back in. Libby says the bird with the florals is so pretty. Yes. There's a fox too that I think is really pretty as well. All right, we're going to stamp this. Um, I like to stamp it a little bit instead of going right up, move that there, instead of going like right up to maybe the ground line, I like to do it a little bit lower. I think it kind of creates a look of like sand with that little space and I like that. So that's where I'm going to position it. I'm going to try to pick up my lid to my misty. Pick it up here. All right, and we're gonna do a gradation, of course, <laughs> on the water too. Oh, Libby, it's so good. It's not a stamp set though, it is a, a die, but I thought it was really pretty. It's all, well, you'll see, it's all very folk art themed, which I'm a sucker for. I love that whimsical, kind of classic, you know, traditional look at the same time. Oh, here we go. We're gonna do um, two inks. Cup of Joe and espresso for our gradation over the water. I'm gonna go ahead and just ink up the whole thing with this cup of Joe. Maybe I should put it here like that. Maybe that's a good idea. Since I'm using 100 inks. Make sure I'm in the corner. So I'll be stamping it multiple times. Beautiful. I can't remember what I did. Well, this is what we're doing. <laughs> it looks a little different than what I did before, but, or what I wrote maybe. We'll stick with it, it's, it would be fine. Great, and now I'm going to grab the espresso and do that upper third. And I think I'll do it one more time. We definitely have a gradation going. Let's do it one last time just to kind of get even more contrast. All right. I like it. I think it looks good. Okay, I'm actually going to dry it because we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending and I just wanna set that ink a little bit so I get avoid getting more of the um, like bleeding. 
because I'll put, I'm, with ink blending, I'll be putting more ink on. So let's put these away before I lose something. My poor crane. Did I even clean that before I put it away? <laughs> no, probably not. All right, I'm going to heat set. There you go. Doesn't take much. So the paper gets kind of hot and you know, that's good. All right. We are going to, I'm gonna check one thing real quick. I'm gonna follow along as close as possible. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to double check. So now I'm going to grab sand, which is a light, light brown, like the lightest brown we have. And I'm going to ink blend over the entire water, but I'm not going to go kind of at the sand. I'm going to stop just like a little bit past because I'm not going to use any masking tape or any... Um, anything to mask. I'm going to just kind of stop just around the sand or shoreline. Let's get this scrap of paper here again. Kind of tap off more excess. And this gradation is actually going to be kind of reverse or we're, we're going to have it light to dark. Even though that's not necessarily reverse in how you're thinking, but in my thinking, I normally would go, it's like reverse compared to how we stamped the water. There we go. Just went a little bit past the water. I just kind of like it, how it softens everything a little bit. And I like to do this, I didn't do this before, like we did the sky before we stamped the mountains. I did this after we stamped the water because I, then I would see that shoreline. I would know exactly where it is instead of trying to guess before I stamped it. Okay, I think that's pretty good for that. We'll now move on to Cup of Joe. And we'll just ink blend kind of that bottom up to like about here with Cup of Joe and create a little gradation. Definitely want to tap off the excess. This one's a dark one. Really trying to be more patient and careful with my ink blending. So I don't get any of those harsh. Turn it and see here, I think. That'll about do it. And these colors will kind of mellow out a little bit too as time goes by. You can see the sky kind of softened a little bit, but that looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, now that we got that blend done, we're ready to stamp some of our like accents, some of those additional images in the set like the sun and the reflection. We'll start with those. We'll eventually do the crane as well, but let's start with the sun and the reflection. We can kind of do these at the same time, actually. I think 
like I have them as two separate steps, but we can do them together. <coughs> Excuse me. That cough came out of nowhere. Thank you, Shirley. Hello, I have so many people from Arizona. That's so cool. Hello, Karen. I was just in Tucson. We went to Tucson for part of our spring break. Tucson, Sonoida, Bisbee. I love going to Bisbee. Okay, we'll put our sun here. I like it kind of in that V of the mountains. We'll do it a little bit higher though, so we have room to fit our crane. And I like to kind of have it this reflection stamped. Kind of below it. I did have fun. It was wonderful. It's a great kit, isn't it, Vicki? It's so good. So unique. Do I want it there? I want this. I think I want this a tiny bit up. Even though this, we're going to stamp this in red. We're actually going to use the cherry from the that was included in the kit. It shows up even over some of those browns, which I was shocked and wouldn't believe it until I tried it, but it does. Oh gosh, I can't pick anything up. There we go. Yes, we did have a nice time in um, Tucson, but we did we did make the mistake of going to, um, forgetting it was St. Patty's Day and was in downtown Tucson on St. Patty's Day. <laughs> And I don't know if you know about Tucson, those of you who have never been. It's a college town, so yeah, it was a little bit rowdy. A little bit rowdy. Oh, here we go. I'm going to grab my full size of the cherry. So here I want to be a little careful before I'm going to warn you before we get going. We, I only want to stamp this sun once completely. I only want to ink it completely with the cherry and stamp it one time and then I'll ink it a second time but do like a partial inking so we get a gradation over the sun. So I'm going to be really careful when I stamp this that I get as much on there as I can. Me too Vicki. I love the hero scapes. They're so fun. They make you feel so accomplished right when you stamp them you're like whoa I'm good because <laughs> they have so much depth in them and you just stamp like this whole landscape. The reflection I'm not worried about, just ink it all up in the cherry. The sun, however, I'm going to be really patient and try to do a good job and ink that up completely because I only I want to get it in one go. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it was a little bit. <laughs> it was a little bit of a happening place, Karen. And we had kids, so it was like, ah, what's going on? Oh, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Okay, sun looks great. I am going to ink up the reflection though and stamp it one more time. The sun turned out beautiful. I'm happy, very happy with that. It's a nice even. We're going to create um, basically our gradation with the same ink, but by, by doing multiple layers, it's going to be darker. Okay, great. That See how much that, that reflection shows up? Isn't that cool? And it looks so good. That red on the brown looks good. Okay, so for the sun reflection, for the um, gradation on the sun, I'm going to angle my ink pad so I only get ink. I'm going to try to do this side of the sun. It doesn't matter though. But I'm going to angle my ink pad so only a portion of the ink pad comes in contact with the stamp. I don't want to completely ink up my stamp. I only want a small portion of it inked up. So we get kind of a, a little bit darker on one side. And I want to do this side. So when I flip it over, that's going to be right here. Okay, so let's hold. And this, if you're using the mini, 
ink pad that came with the kit, that's actually even easier to do. So you can see, I'm gonna try to hold this up so you can see. Maybe, I don't know if I have enough space here. There we go. Is it kind of working? It's hard to see. But it's just angling, just so just a small portion of it comes in contact. And I wonder if I still have that white paper. You might be able to see this one. Can you see maybe how it's just getting some ink here? There we go. So now we're ready to stamp it. Grab my scrubber again. And I can see it, but I'm gonna make it even more intense. I'm gonna do it another time. You can kind of see though, it is a bit of a gradation. I'm gonna do it even one more time. Ink up, make sure, just make sure you're inking up the same side if you're stamping it again. Don't forget what side you inked up. There we go. Oh yeah, that was the ticket. That's that, that last stamping really did give it that gradation. Finger dauber works totally, yes. I just never got accustomed to using those. There's always so many other ways to do something. So if you can accomplish kind of the same thing in a different way, that's easier for you. I've got a sneeze coming. Um, feel free to do it that way. There's not one way to do something and definitely not one right way. So whatever works for you. I decided to do a blue and purple sky. Oh, good. But I think it's going to turn out too dark. No, I'm glad you tried your colors. I don't know if anybody did purple one. I don't know if anybody did a purple uh, theme kind of with this uh, set, but that would be beautiful. I did a um, purple sunset card once and I was like uh, floored with how pretty that one turned out. And I always I always say that I'm, I'm not like, Libby's the purple fan, I don't hate purple. It's just not my go-to like color. And every time I use it, I'm always like, huh. Oh, Libby might be on to something. <laughs> Blue and purple will be nice, like twilight. I agree totally, Cindy. It's gonna be really pretty. All right. So that is basic. Most of our scene is done. Now we just have one more kind of decoration to stamp or one more additional image to stamp. And that is um, the crane, which is up here. <laughs> I should use more purple. It really, it is, it's become, um, a pretty, and in fact, the new, the April kit, I made, um, stamped something or ink blended something with the purple combo. And I, again, I was like today thinking, why don't I do purple more? This one's really pretty. So you're right, Louie, I should do purple more. I'm going to stamp the crane. I'm gonna stamp the crane in black. I'm gonna use that pitch black that we used earlier for the very tip top of our mountains. This will kind of incorporate as well the, um, the sentiment that we do later. We're breezing through this. This feels like a very complicated card, right? From looks, even I, even even I who made it, I was like, oh, this one's gonna be, take some time. I think I am wrong. We're already we're through the we're through the most of it, really. But the scene with the gradations, I think, is just why it feels so complex. It's because those gradations, which um, are actually pretty easy to do. 
Oh no, I stamped my crane a little off. Oh well, it'll just have to be how it is. It's a little off. I'm not gonna stamp it again. It's fine. That's what I'm gonna convince myself. <laughs> oh, I messed it up at the very, almost the very end. How did I do that? Okay, so we're now going to trim this down. This, we're gonna do this kind of fun, modern card design. Um, I've been obsessed with it lately. It's in flight, thank you, Kathy, there we go. It's in movement, very good. I can always count on fellow stampers to know just what to say. Um, I love this design, I'm currently super obsessed with it. I think I've made four cards in the last week with this design. Don't tell anybody, but we're gonna do it again. I think it's perfect for this uh, scene. And it's such a great, easy way to kind of take a background that's maybe feels too busy to be all like the whole card front. Just cutting that little sliver down just kind of makes it a little bit, pushes it back a little bit. All right, we're just gonna cut off like a quarter of an inch. I actually need to remove this. I think it is added a quarter of an inch, but I'm gonna remove this tape. But it can be anything. It can be even bigger than that. And you know what, I think I might remove, I have a little gap here on this side. So I'm gonna remove a little bit from this side first and you can definitely feel free to do this too if you have the same thing. Cut that off. And now I'll remove a little bit less than a quarter inch because I removed a little bit here. It, again, it doesn't matter. You could remove more because we're not trying to get some kind of perfect measurement. In fact, I usually just kind of eyeball it. I'm like, that looks good. I think that's about a quarter of an inch. Look at how pretty that looks too. Kind of cutting the edges just cleans it all up. So pretty. Yes, the tape is left from the homework live. <laughs> the, the, the prep along, our homework prep along. Yep. It is guilty. I did clean up though. I did clean up, but I cut because I, you know, I can't, like I said in that prep along, I can't, um, I had to make other cards and I can't start on other cards until I clean up my area. Okay, so now we're going to grab these incredible transfers. OMG, I love them so much, especially the little red like accents. It's gorgeous. There's some here. So I'm going to pull out the sheet. We're going to add some transfers to this. This is what I think really steps this card up to the next level. And these were included in the kit. I can't believe it. Have you guys used transfers before? Like, I've been a card maker actually for a long time, but I think transfers were kind of, and I did scrapbooking, but I never got into transfers or like um, ephemeral. I never got into that kind of stuff. I, Laura, I know someone else asked about it too, and I don't know what I can't remember what the design team said about what it what it translates to I I can't remember I'll have to look it up again I know we had some other customer was asking about that same question which is a good question and I can't remember what the design team said so I want some transfers let's grab my original I want like a bulk of them down the left side and then a little bit over here on the right. Put it into Google. Oh, really? Nothing offensive. Okay, random text. Thanks, Libby. <laughs> Libby, 
it knows her stuff. And I think this is the correct way it's supposed to go. And I'm gonna just cut some off. It just is a little bit easier for me that way to manage. No, it doesn't have to be cut, but that's what I'm gonna do. Cut some off. Obviously this is more than I need. And I wanna get some of those red characters because I think they're so pretty. So I'm gonna peel the transfers off of the backing. Something like that, position it. And I don't wanna transfer all of it. Like I want it to be imperfect. I don't want a perfect transfer. So I'm going to, I wanna have a little bit of a raw edge, a little bit. Oops. And you know, I can put this here and actually save that top bit. We could cut it off even. Ah, I'll just leave it. But I do kind of transfer most of it. But I'm gonna, I want to have the bottom, sorry, let me move this up so you can see better. I wanna have like the bottom kind of break here. Yeah, these are very good quality. So what I've heard, um, um, I've never had any problems transferring with them. I know in the past people have used transfers from the past um, when they were popular a few years ago, maybe several years ago. They didn't transfer so good. But these I've heard from people who've used the uh, old transfers that these transfer really nice. Get that last bit. Oh yeah. And it's not perfect and that is exactly what I wanted. I don't want it to transfer perfectly. I think it's just a little bit more interesting if it's a little broken, but look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. I love it. All right, and now we're gonna add some to this side. I'm gonna try to use uh, let's see, I've got this scrap from last time. We'll use some of that. It's magic, right, Michelle? So good. Let's use some of this. I think it goes this way. Right? Let me look. No, it goes this way. And you often get like a little bit of some of the transfer kind of go beyond your paper. You can always just kind of press it against your cardstock. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this. I think that is where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna save this because there's still plenty on there. I'm even gonna save this. <laughs> I 
even though I use most of it, I'm still going to save it. There's still a little bit there. I might use that. And this is why my craft room is a mess. Keep it all. All right. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, those transfers is what stepped this up to like the next level. So good. I got some, I transferred my onto my finger. I got some way up here. Well, that's just going to stay up there. It's now part of the card. I love it. Oh, so good. Okay, with the last thing we have to left to do is our sentiment. So we're gonna grab that clear stamp set again. The sentiments in this set are so pretty. Uh, I did a combo of wishing you peace of mind, but you could do wishing you smooth sailing. Um, you could do enjoy the journey, you know, whatever sentiment, that could be like a birthday card even. Or maybe retirement, maybe. Yeah, Linda, right? Can't throw anything away. I might use it later. <laughs> Probably won't, but I won't admit that to myself. All right, I'm gonna do the same sentiment. Let's put our panel aside. We're gonna do some heat embossing onto black cardstock. I'm gonna grab some scrap back black cardstock here. It's very loved, isn't it? <laughs> I put my products through the ringer. I could clean it up a little bit better with um, some Hero uh, Ultra Clean. I should hold it here. But as you can see, I'm completely out and Hero is out too. So my stamp sets cannot get as clean as I, they could get cleaner, but I can't right now when I'm out of the product. All right. And there's matching dies for the sentiments, which is so awesome. Mindy, Mindy taught me the best trick ever, which is using pigment ink instead of embossing watermark ink. Now I'm obsessed and this is how I will always heat emboss from now on. <laughs> Thanks, Mindy. It's a game changer because Mindy is brilliant, of course, as you all, I'm sure, are aware. All right, I'm gonna put it there. Oh no, you didn't do anything. <laughs> Nothing bad, always good. I'm gonna put some antiseptic powder down. And grab my, I'm gonna use the, really any pigment would, ink would work, but I have plenty of unicorn ink. I love unicorn ink, so that's what I'm using. It's the best white pigment ink out there. And look guys, look at my cut. Guess what I cut myself, what, how I cut myself. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, it wasn't crafting. <laughs> you learned it from Gina K? No way. Well, I'm not surprised because she's obviously brilliant, but I would have believed you Mindy came up with that all, all on your own. But yes, she's brilliant. I cut my finger cooking. So I think that that means cooking's too dangerous to do and I shouldn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> the two, one, one of my worst cuts ever was cooking. So, and now it was a pretty bad one again. But this time it wasn't cutting open a tofu packaging, which was what happened last time. This one was cutting off ginger. Man, ginger can be hard. And plus my knife is probably too dull. Isn't that ironic? Your knife should be sharper so you don't cut yourself. Doesn't make sense, but it does. 
those of uh, those of you those of you who cook I know will understand that. All right, I'm dipping this into gold embossing powder. There we go. Look at it just I'm telling you, it's so good. It's like pigment ink stamps the details better. I'm obsessed with this. It's a game changer. Looks so good. Holding on to every last little you know, spec. Look at how clear that is. Amazing. Obsessed with this new thing. Okay, heat setting real quick. Yes, I was cooking. <laughs> Yeah, I've never cut myself crafting, and I craft way more, way more time spent in the craft room crafting. Never cut myself. Cooking? Yes, I have. No worries, Michelle. Um, yeah, this is a good question. Libby wants to know. Ask. I'm sure Mindy has a great answer. I like to use. I use unicorn ink. I use that. Um, do I use any? Sometimes I I used to use for a long time Gonzai Tombi watercolor, white watercolor. Um, I was doing something really stupid, Michelle. I wasn't. I was cutting the ginger, not peeling it, because it had like a weird hard spot, like a gouge in it, and I wanted to take that part out. I should have just left it alone. Should have left it in. Oh, great tips. Dr. Martin's white. I've heard that before. That's good. Minnie says Spellbinder's new white splatter is great. Ooh, Minnie, I'll have to try that. And Mary says no bleed white ink. Ooh. Is that like a, is that a brand, Mary? Dr. Phil's Martin. Oh, okay. Everybody's saying the same thing. Got it. Mary and Lauren and Mindy are saying Dr. Phil Martin's Bleed proof white is awesome. I have to get some of that. I'll have to get some because I love doing splatters. And you definitely want something that's going to kind of stay put and be opaque, be very opaque. Well, I'm going to clean off that antiseptic powder and find my coordinating dyes, which I hope I got out. Yes, I did. Good, good, good. And I bet I've seen those, um, how those, uh-oh, oh, here we go. We lost connection for a second. Oh, that's interesting. This is the first time I've done picture in picture, so learning some of the kinks. Or I guess we lost connection for half a second, so it's switched out. I was going to say those Dr. Phil, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Phil, those Dr. P.H. Martins, are pretty big too. They'll last you a long time, I think. I typically just use what I have, which is right now I have, have the unicorn pigment ink and I use that. And it does pretty good. Uh, all right, I need some tape to hold this in place. Oh, my cat's gonna be noisy for you guys. Sometimes before she sits down, she likes to like sing. Okay. Take that down. But was one person asked one time for me to show her? She's such a she's a really sweet kitty, but she hates to be picked up. She hates it. And I picked her up one time. <laughs> brought her so everybody could see her during a live and she was just like not having it she didn't scratch or anything she doesn't scratch she's she's sweet but she's just like uh, i hate this <laughs> she was not having it libby was there for that i'm sure she remembers all right gonna run that through Oh, 
oh, look at how good these dies are because they cut so close to the edge. I love that. Let's see if I can get this out of here. It just gets this really pretty sentiment. <laughs> Was it you, Libby? <laughs> she hates it too. She's not sweet about it. Oh, yeah. She she she's sweet, but she hates it. Like she, I guess we got her when she was kind of older. I don't think she was picked up very much. So she, as opposed to my other kitty, who I got when she was a kitten, I carried her around everywhere. I held her all the time. She loved to be picked up, but um, Elodie hates it. She just gets scared. She gets really scared. So even if I'm just picking her up from the floor, like onto my lap, she gets scared. She's like, no, I don't like that. I would be much. I should have like tapped on my lap to have her come up because she would have probably done that and wouldn't have complained about that at all because she's very friendly. She loves pets. Like she's not motivated by food or all, the only thing that she really likes is pets. Like she's not even like a, a sink drinker, you know, who loves to drink fresh water from the sink. She just loves pets, a pet, being petted. Okay, let's so I got my two sentiments. This looks a little big. I think this card, I think my card stock's a little off. Let's see. So I put that on. It looks a little big. Yeah, it is a tiny bit big. So I'm gonna trim off that little extra, like eighth of an inch. There we go. That's better. Now it won't look like, it looked a little bit big on the side when I placed it down. Oh, enjoy your ice cream, Michelle. And I wish I had ice cream. <laughs> No fair. You know what I did try finally? Um, I don't know if anybody's tried the Costco right now. It's it's you can get it if they are not out of stock. There is um I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down real quick. There's this peanut butter chocolate pie. I finally tried it. It went TikTok viral last year and I tried to get it and I couldn't find it because it was always sold out. Um, but I picked it up and we tried it last Sunday. Very good, especially if you like peanut butter and chocolate, like I do. But it is very, 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 very rich. And that's not, not something normally I would complain about, but it was, maybe I had too big of a slice. Have a smaller slice. Don't have a big slice like this. <laughs> have a smaller slice. But it was super good. And the last thing we're going to do is put our sentiment down. Uh, I am going to pop it up with some foam adhesive. Grab some black foam adhesive. Just kind of makes things a little bit more seamless. Maybe if I can grab it. And I think it just barely fits behind this sentiment. These are one eighth strips. Okay, so now I'll remove the backing and grab my tweezers. Let's start with the bigger one, the peace of mind. And I didn't stamp anything in the water. Uh, I could have stamped like one of the 
the guys in a boat. There's two images of boats or ships. One's a ship, one's a boat, I think. That would really work, I think, well with this sentiment. But because I didn't stamp anybody in the water, I have plenty of room to place my sentiment there. And I like it over the... That reflection, I think, kind of draws your eye in. Look at that. That looks so good, that gold heat embossing on the black. Let's make sure we're straight. Oh yeah, that looks great. There's the finished card. And even when we left it kind of the white of the paper, like here, you can see that beautiful gradation from that little bit of over blending with the sand and a little bit of leftover um, soft blossom. And that white of the paper looks, but it's not white though, because remember we did it on um, antique ivory cardstock and I love that. I think it just adds a little bit of richness and more contrast to our little bit of white left on the side. Super fun. Look at how great they look. It turned out wonderful. I love this stamp set. So great. Oh I almost forgot. I get to share you now share with you now some cards I created with the April kit. So normally in make alongs we are now going to share next month's kit that's why we tried we're now trying to do the make longs just before the kit releases but because of easter this this week this month is going to be a little bit of an exception i can't show you the whole kit like i normally would do in the make longs but i can show you some of my cards today and if you want to see more i really encourage you to check out the um countdown that's going on right now on our blog for the kit for the new April kit coming this Monday and today's just the first day of the countdown tomorrow will be the second day and the last day and then Monday we will have our blog hop the whole release you get to see the class the April premium kit the April classic kit and all the add-ons for April First, let me show you um, a panel I made. I won't show you a whole card, but I'll show you a panel I made. I haven't finished it yet. Of That is created with products that are in the classic and the premium kit. <sighs> Look at how beautiful. As you can probably tell, there are layering stencils in this kit. Look at how beautiful this is. And you can kind of tell with the how this is kind of popped up, that there are, there is, I should say, a cover plate die also included in the um, classic and premium April kit. So pretty. So that's just a panel I made. It didn't quite turn into a card yet, but I thought I would share that because you can get a real good idea of the kit. Here is a card I created with the layering stencils. I didn't use the cover plate though. And yeah, you're just in time, Cindy, for the sneak peek. Um, but I really like how it turned out. I wanna show you this completed card. Look at how beautiful, oh my gosh. Love those layering stencils, they're so pretty. Added a little white gel pen highlight, which brought in the, um, Sentiment, super pretty. And then I'm gonna show you a card I created. This is the last card I have to share. But this is a card I created. Where'd it go? I forgot where it went. This is a card I created with the um, premium kit. Oh, I forgot where I put it. I had it in hand. Where did I put it? <laughs> Oh no! Shoot, I thought I put it in there. Where is it over here? 
down here. All right, let's see. I just had it before the live. What did I do with it? I'm going to turn this camera off real quick and let's see if I can find it real fast. Well, darn. I'm not sure where I put it. Let's stand up and see. Nope, it's not there. I'm sorry. I don't know where I put that card. I had it in my hand before the live, and now I'm not sure where I put it. Well, shoot. Well, I will. it'll be shared tomorrow. I can tell you that much, because it's going to be part of the countdown. Is it under my mat? I know, right? Where did I put it? I definitely had it before we started the live. I had it in hand because I was like kind of running around cleaning up things a little bit. <gasps> I found it. <laughs> I, I, I've done it before, Libby, but I found it. I guess where it was? In the trash. That's where it was. I literally just found it in the trash. I do not know how that happened. But here is the other card. Let's bounce over to this camera again. Let's do that. I think you can see it better on the black. This was created with the elements in the premium kit. Look at all those images. It's a beautiful clear stamp set. And... I had a lot of fun doing a little bit of Copic coloring, creating a background with it. Because you can see there's these beautiful folk art kind of theme going on with this April um, My Monthly Hero kits and the add-ons, which we did talk a little bit about today with um, Libby Salsom. She said she, she liked the um, bird one. I mentioned there's a fox one could probably show you the add-ons. <laughs> Last thing I'll show you is my couple add-on cards. I know I must have felt like kept, I don't know how that happened, right, Cindy? I, I my trash moves. I move it all the time because I gotta have it close and then it's in the way of my cam my my setup. Here's the fox I was talking about. So great. So this is the add-on. So I'm kind of showing you a little, normally I stick to just the kits for the sneak peeks, but I am going to, because I can't show you the whole kit, I'll show you some of my add-on card, cards created with some of the add-ons. But that fox is so beautiful. And then look at this one. How cute is that? And then a beautiful uh, stamp set with actually layering another layering stencil set. So some more fun cards. So those are the add-ons. Some of the add-ons, there's more than this. There's more add-ons than this. So this is just some of them ones I created with. <laughs> and, and then, then I'm just going to pop the kit cards back on screen real quick. My little panel here that I didn't finish. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, thank you so much for joining me and creating this beautiful card with the March kit and um, getting a little sneak peek of what's coming on Monday for our April release. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and get some family time in and just hopefully get a little bit of relaxation as well. All right, everybody. Thank you. And I will see you. Oh, and one last thing I want to tell you. 
Uh, I will be doing a spotlight live showing the whole April release on Tuesday, which is April 2nd at 4 p.m. Pacific, um, Pacific time. And um, I will be sharing other samples as well. So I hope you can join me this Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, where we go over the entire April release and um, as the kits as well. Happy Easter for those who celebrate, and I hope to see you on Tuesday. Bye, everyone.